Good afternoon, everyone. This is Luis Rodriguez with Unique Wax Studios. Today, we are very excited to be uh, talking about franchise marketing and why, how, why and how we can make marketing matter. So I am delighted today to have as our ho or as our guest here, uh, Kelly Gomes. Kelly is a person who has franchise marketing in his DNA. His resume boasts positions as marketing director for the U.S. West Division of Burger King in Los Angeles, VP of Marketing for Four Eyes by Grand Vision, and brand president for Atticus Franchise Group in Miami. Uh, Kelly's brought his vision and his focus to the benefit of Unique Wax Studios franchisees since March of this year. Yeah. Well, Kelly. Hi. No, happy to be here. Kelly, I'm going to jump right into it. Um, yeah. You're the president of marketing for UKW Franchising. We're the franchisor for Unique Wax Studios. Tell us a little about your background in franchising and why you chose to come to Unique. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I went to, to school here in Florida. I uh, went to Florida International University, got my bachelor's degree and also my, my MBA there. Uh, always in, in marketing, it's always been what's, what's um, interested me the most. Um, I started my career in Burger King Corporation um, and went to a leadership development program there and um, was placed as the marketing manager out on the West Coast. So I was working with franchisees um, hand in hand, kind of day to day. Um, through all of the, um, you know, all of the, the restaurant, the quick service restaurant industry challenges that exist. Uh, and, I, and I would help them. I was their marketing partner uh, across all of the markets that we had. Um, did really well there and uh, became the, the director of the West Coast, uh, which back then was about um, half the United States. So I had a, a team under me and, 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 and helped lead the strategy uh, for the local investment that the franchisees would do. Um, and then I was asked to come back to headquarters. Um, I spent uh, time there overseeing the whole U.S. for, for local marketing um, and did that for about a year um, in, in, in that capacity. Um, and then I had an opportunity to join Grand Vision, um, which was uh, really cool for me because it was a, a retail product. So a shift away from food and going into um, something more tangible with an actual product and, and imp impacting that, that customer decision to, to, to uh, to buy that product from you, right? Versus a, uh, versus a competitor. Um, so that appealed to me. Uh, Grand Vision at the time had just bought uh, Four Eyes because they wanted to get into the U.S. market. Uh, Grand Vision is not a big uh, name here in the U.S., uh, but they uh, globally have about um, maybe 6,500 or 7,000 doors. Um, and they weren't in the U.S. yet, so they ended up um, buying Four Eyes as a way to get in. So um, my role there was more so to take the company from kind of the mom and pop setup uh, that it was uh, into a more kind of professional corporation um, with a full marketing team, you know, with a, with a, with a retail focus and, and a digital marketing focus. Um, and in a lot of those fronts, I had to kind of build that stuff from scratch because uh, it was non-existent when I arrived. Um, and I, I did that for, for about a year and a half. Um, ended up leaving there to join uh, a private equity group um, based out of Atlanta. I was still in Miami at the time, though, but I would travel between both um, areas. Uh, and I was the brand president for the Massage Envy business that we had there. So I'm a little bit in a unique kind of position, uh, I think, even coming to UniK, because uh, not only have I been on the corporate side, right, when it comes to Burger King uh, Corporation and working there on the, on the corporate side, um, and even in my capacity now, but I spent time as a franchisee uh, running the day-to-day -day operations. Uh, and for me at the time, it was more uh, to kind of uh, round out that, uh, that operational experience. Um, I ended up learning I, I don't like operations uh, as much as I thought I would and, and dealing with those problems that, that happen every single day. So, um, you know, for me, when the opportunity came up uh, to join and, you know, to, to I, I didn't even know that we were we were headquartered in, in Aventura. Uh, so uh, when they ended up reaching out to me and we started talking, um, I, I, I immediately was was drawn to the brand um, just because it's something that that I have in my own routine uh, and I know how beneficial it is to me. Uh, but it's something that I could lead the company into into the next iteration 
um, you know, past some of the rebranding efforts that we're, that we're doing um, and, and have completed so far and, and taking us into uh, a more digital marketing uh, type of focus from an organization perspective. So um, it's been a, a unique ride for me, I would say, through my career, but uh, everything I've done, I've always wanted to do it. So um, no, no complaints on, on that end. Well, it sounds like also uh, you, from what I'm listening to, you had very much to do with the evolution of marketing for all of these companies and all of these brands. In other words, you didn't get to a set company that was very mature and, the, and just kind of oversee what was going on. You were instrumental yeah. in what happened to get them to go to those places. Yes. Yeah, very much so. So I've always been um, hands on. Uh, that kind of comes from my time at Burger King. So uh, working in, in, in Burger King and in, in the 3G uh, culture, um, there's no uh, bureaucracy and things like that. So um, I was always very uh, hands on and, and the things happen at the at the restaurants, the things happen at the studios. Um, so that's where you need to be. And, uh, and when you have to build something uh, new, um, you know, you have to be in there with it. Uh, if not, uh, you, you won't understand how it works, which means you can't use it to, to, to your advantage uh, against the competition uh, as, as you're marketing. Got it. Got it. So what would you say today are the biggest marketing benefits that franchising offers its franchisees? And more specifically, how do UniKWAX franchisees benefit? Yeah. Um, so I think the, the biggest thing, right, I think for franchisees is that they're not alone, right? So I, I think when you join um, an established concept, right, and you look at UniK Wax and, and, and the, the, the operational procedures we have, the marketing best practices, the, the support that you get from joining, um, you know, a, an organization like ours or any, you know, franchise business in general, that's why you go into franchising is because you want to take a template uh, that you think has a unique business opportunity and then be able to, to, to move quickly, right? Uh, if you started on your own and started any business from scratch, um, you're going to be behind the eight ball when it comes to, you know, how do you get market, how do you get customers to the door? Uh, what are your operational procedures look like? How do you uh, kind of uh, retain that knowledge as you go through staff so that, um, you know, you can stay, uh, you can stay relevant. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing is that you're not alone uh, and you're not starting from scratch uh, on the marketing side. Uh, re, uh, I think the biggest benefit from, from being a part of a franchise is, um, you know, we see, me and my team see everything that's going on across the different regions that we have, right? Um, so it's very easy for us to um, take a look at what's happening holistically uh, and leverage those best practices in different regions and, and be able to partner with a, with a franchisee in a specific region and tell them, hey, this is what we see has worked really well. Um, so instead of a franchisee kind of just starting from, uh, you know, uh, their starting from square one and having to say, okay, well, let me do this. And then I failed. Okay, that's fine. Let me try the next thing. They can already start and be five steps ahead of the curve. Um, and I think that's the biggest difference between, uh, you know, joining a, a franchise and, and kind of starting from scratch. That helps eliminate trial and error. And, yeah, and in terms of, uh, of our franchisees, it's the same thing. You know, they, they don't have to go out and, and take the hard knocks, you know, in, in the market out there. Yeah, um, no, definitely. We, we, we do that, um, you know, every time we talk to an operator that, that's having a sales challenge or, or wants to do more, wants to drive more customers, we, we are able to give that perspective of um, this is, these are the things that we're seeing are working um, so that, you know, we can quickly apply them, uh, get learnings there and continue to, to, to grow them. Okay, well, I can see that. How has franchise marketing changed over the last 10 years, would you say? Um, I think uh, it's not just franchise marketing. I think it's marketing in general, right? So we've gone from very planned mediums like television, right? Um, and, and even radio, but television more so where you buy TV a, a year in advance and, and you have to really plan everything out. And you have your marketing calendar, which um, makes you commit to very fixed blocks uh, from, uh, from a marketing perspective and what you're going to communicate um, to now going into a digital landscape where, you know, you have mediums like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, um, that, uh, and even Twitter that allow you to communicate with your customer in essence in real time, right? So when a customer is upset on Twitter, they're going to immediately, um, voice their, their opinion, uh, and you need to have the right tools to be able to, to, to respond to those things. Uh, on the marketing side, when you look at Facebook and Instagram, 
um, there it's a unique challenge, right? You need to have a real dynamic creative that you're, you're changing and copy that you're changing so that it's relevant um, and you have to bring it in and out and make sure that you're not overexposing the audience to uh, the message that you're trying to, to get in front of them because then that negatively impacts um, your, your, your spend and, 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 and your CPM. So uh, it's not as kind of clear cut as, as how maybe a marketing calendar would have ran, you know, a um, few years back uh, where it was very static blocks. Uh, where now really as a marketer, you have to be dynamic and, and have the right partners and the right tools to, to be able to, to reach people um, in, this, in, in this digital era. Well, and it appears, at least from a franchise marketing, from a franchise sales and franchise development point of view, that it's become a lot more consumer driven than it ever has been. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I, I think, um, you know, consumers are at the forefront of everything, right? So, uh, you, you know, they're, they're always going to want access to their information uh, as soon as they can get it. Uh, but now you're not getting these, these touches uh, through, you know, phone calls to, to the stores. Uh, people are going online and finding the information themselves, right? Uh, people are going online and finding reviews, uh, finding testimonials. So uh, the customer journey um, isn't as, as clear cut as what it was in the past. And, and you have to ad adapt and, and, and use these, these new mediums to, to, to get your message across. I see. Um, now, digital and social medium have become media have become the backbone of so many marketing campaigns these days. What kind of social and digital campaigns have you found to be the most effective? Um, I think the ones that have the the, the most clear purpose um, become the more effective ones, right? Because I think if you have a very clear mission of what it is that the, your campaign is going to do, uh, or objective of what your campaign is going to do. Um, that allows you to set it up correctly, right? So when you go to Facebook, you have a lot of different ways you can configure uh, your advertisement and the, and the platform itself wants you to succeed, right? So you're, it's not a gaming system, but you do have to know what your objective is. And then those things trickle down to, you know, do you have the right audience uh, that you're targeting? Uh, and then do you have the right creative uh, and messaging for that audience? Um, and do you have the right offer for that audience, right? So that's all going to impact your, your metrics as you go uh, across the funnel. Uh, and I think that if you're, if you're very purposeful on the front end, um, you get those returns uh, on the back end. Um, and, and not only from a conversion standpoint that you're actually going to get the appointments uh, or the sales that you're trying to get, um, but even just the efficiencies on spend, uh, on, on the money that you're spending or that a franchisee would be spending. Uh, because if you're, um, you know, and I, and I see this a lot in, in, you know, in franchise businesses that have like decentralized um, digital media strategies and, and franchises are kind of all out there on their own. Um, they're having to f learn those lessons uh, themselves. They don't have an agency that can help them make impactful creative. Uh, and then when you have bad creative on Facebook, uh, you know, that's not what they're around for. So you end up paying uh, a higher CPM to reach the same audience just because Facebook wants to run through your budget faster and get rid of that that bad ad from its network um, that, you know, all of that stems from just not being purposeful up front and saying, what is it that we're going to accomplish with this campaign? Um, and then how are we going to reach our audience? What's the offer going to be? What's the creative going to look like? And then measuring that and optimizing it as you go. Um, yeah. So see, and just as a side note, CPM is cost per thousand. Right? Yeah, it's cost per thousand, right? So I, I like that indicator a lot because especially in franchising, I think uh, franchisees get bombarded a lot with, um, you know, people, salespeople who just walk into their, their, their location and then will say, hey, I have this great idea and, and hey, give me your money because of X, Y, and Z. I'll put you in this magazine. I'll put you in this uh, festival. I'll do this, that, and the other. Um, you know, I think as a franchisee, the most efficient thing you can do, you know what your cost to reach a thousand people is on Facebook or any digital medium because you'll have those, those metrics. But uh, to, to start using that as a, as a measuring stick for those random things that come up in your neighborhood that you can say, OK, well, if, if it's going to cost me you know, twelve dollars to reach a thousand people on Facebook, then why would I want to be in this, um, you know, in this local festival where I'm only going to reach two thousand people? So like the amount of energy that you're going to have to put in to go and run that festival to reach two, 3,000 people, as opposed to, you know, spending, um, you know, 12, $12 for every thousand people that you're going to reach with your messaging, um, you know, it's important to understand that. So I, I like to talk to a lot about the CPM 
uh, kind of figure, especially because we're you know we want we want to drive awareness, and that's one of the things that we're that we're focused on. Um, that you have a measuring stick to to kind of compare all those different ideas that that kind of come to, come your way. Sounds very data driven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, no, that's good. That makes <laughs> sense because you know we we get emotionally linked to this event or this thing, and it looks cool and it's sexy and all of that, and. Yep. And oftentimes we don't think, or a lot of people don't think, to sit down and take a look at what the numbers that support that are. And that's, that's what you're saying. You do. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and that's one of the benefits we have now with digital marketing, right? I think uh, being able to understand, um, you know, the journey and what people are doing online, you look at the platform like Google Analytics uh, and the wealth of information it gives you. Uh, to understand how people uh, are are interacting with your website and where you're losing them and where you have to make changes, um, you know we've never had that kind of stuff in the past, and it, a lot of it was driven on intuition uh, with regards to what a website should look like. And now you have technologies like Hotjar and different platforms that give you 100% uh, transparency that you know, you know, 30% uh, of your traffic don't make it this far down your web page, um, or you know, th different insights like that 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 you start to say, okay, well I'm going to put this creative here. I'm going to you know, move, move, move things around the website because I need people to know this uh, when they visit us. Got it. Got it. Now, are there situations where social or digital efforts might not be effective for franchise marketing? Uh, um, can you give me some examples of, you know, what you might do instead? I think the biggest risk that... Um, potential franchisees, right? Uh, so if you, if you think even about our audience and, and, and this webinar that we're doing, um, you know, as you evaluate different concepts, I think that uh, what would set off alarm bells for me is when you go to a franchisor and they say, um, oh yeah, you know, social media, you, you have full access and you'll run it on your own. You know, you, you can do whatever you want. Um, and I think that that's a, a, a dangerous thing um, because you kind of put your franchisee out there on an island by himself to figure it out. Um, and, 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 you know, to be frank, they're running the business, right? They don't have time to, to dive in and look at all these different metrics and make assumptions. Uh, and then they don't have the freedom. If you're in a decentralized uh, kind of digital model and you, everybody has their own Instagram account or every location has their own Instagram account for whatever concept it is they're creating, um, the things that they would have to do to impact their conversion numbers would have to be on the landing pages and on the website, which you know typically the the franchisor a franchisor won't do that, right? They're not going to say, "Hey, you can also run the website." Um, so I think that when brands do that uh, to their franchisees, I think it's a little bit of a cop out. Um, and I say that because uh, it's a lot of work, yeah, to do social media and to to put processes in place, um, you know, to 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 facilitate advertising and interacting with the community and taking some of that local content and putting it on your on your main. Uh, page, but um, if you are able to do that, I think the, the the results are a lot better. And that's something that that you know, even me and my team worked on this year um, very hard. As soon as I joined, um, you know, we started creating a lot of different processes to to help our franchisees be successful on the digital marketing front. Uh, and it shows, um, you know, in, in in the numbers that we look at. Uh, but I see a lot of uh, franchise concepts, kind of especially the new ones, right? The ones that are uh, kind of new emerging concepts that don't have like a, an established history. Uh, like we would have at UniK, you know, they end up uh, just saying, yeah, you run, you run social media, Lewis, uh, knock yourself out. Uh, we'll send you creative every month and they send you three pictures and then, you know, what you have to do at that point and, and how your understanding of Facebook and Instagram works, uh, it's going to be an uphill battle. And, and, and when you're opening up a new location uh, and you're trying to figure that out at the same time and you're trying to run it, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it can be a dangerous scenario in, in, in some instances. So it sounds like you're saying that it's not that social or digital efforts aren't might aren't effective in some situations. It's that they're misapplied or unbridled, if you will. That they're just uh, uh, given free reign, and and there's no really there's no focus or or direction behind them. Yeah. Okay. And, and you end up having, you know, if you think of a franchise concept, right, uh, any concept, if you, if you have uh, a marketing perspective from different points of views, even in a, in a, in a market, right, let's say as a franchisee, you open up in, um, say, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, you open up there and you have four different franchisees all running 
four different social media profiles, their own, their own way that they think they see fit, all doing advertising the own, the own way that they think is, is right, because they're learning at, at the same time, right? Like, that's not their, their expertise. Um, you end up having conflicting uh, messages. Um, you know, people can, 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 can bid into other trade zones, and it creates those types of risks as well. Um, you know, you just don't have the ability to create the, the type of content that you need to be able to get the results that you, that you want to get. Um, and now Facebook and Instagram, you know, is a, is a very pay to play type of place. So even if you have your, your business pages and you set all that stuff up, you're organically, you're not going to get any traction. Like no, no one's going to go outside of, you know, you and your, your friends are going to go and like a, a, a particular page. It's not like how it was, you know, uh, years back where, uh, everything would come up on people's feeds and you, you didn't really have to advertise on Facebook because you could just uh, get your friends to like your page and reshare it and more and more people will see it. Um, Facebook now actively suppresses uh, business content uh, because they want you to spend money on ads uh, and then their ad pl platform is complex. So if you don't know what you're doing in there, you don't have the, 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 the right exposure or experience on it. Um, you're going to learn some hard lessons up front that are going to cost you uh, a significant amount of money. Well, I'm sure you've seen those hard lessons. Uh, yeah. but let's pivot uh, for a moment to UniK Wax Studios. You've only been here since March, but a lot of people already buzzing about your contribution. What are some of the ways marketing has evolved at UniK since you came on board and what can you tell us about your plans for 2020 without giving away any big secrets here? Yeah. Um, yeah. I have to be careful with the secrets, but, sure. um, but no, I, I think we have a lot, a lot going for us, right? I, when, what attracted me to the company, um, you know, was uh, the growth ambitions that we have for the brand and where we want to take um, our unit count and, and the type of franchisees that we want to bring along with us for the journey uh, to grow. Um, you know, I was already a believer in the product and the service because I was a customer, so that that wasn't uh, you know difficult uh, difficult for me. But it was more so the vision that we have uh, as an organization for where we want to be um, in the years ahead. I think that's uh, exciting for any any concept or any brand that we're that we're going to get into, especially if someone's looking to to invest into a brand. Um, in terms of you know kind of the focus for you know even this year going into next year. Um, I can't get into too many of the details, but I think a lot of it revolves around technology um, and technology that centers around um, our customers' needs, right? So how do we make, um, you know, an experience that uh, when you ask, you know, 84% of our customers will say they'll, they'll change, they would change nothing about the waxing experience. Uh, that's great from a loyalty perspective, right? And you're going to have uh, customers that stay with us, um, you know, well into three, four, five years. Um, and don't want us to change the experience. Uh, I think you know that's an opportunity for some. You know, if you were a, if you were a lazy company, you would say, "Well, great, then I don't have to invest in anything. I don't have to do anything. I just got to open the door and keep it going." Uh, but when we look at uh, kind of the, the revenue generation uh, piece of the business and and what different things we could do there, uh, technology is a big part of it. The right partners is a big part of it. All of it has to center around the customer experience uh, because if you know if if, if all of my customers say uh, that they're okay with the way it is. Uh, then I, you know, I really have to have a strategic point of view uh, about what the future looks like and what the experience looks like so that when they do go into one of our studios, um, you know, when, when they go through an experience and they say, wow, that was pretty cool. Um, those are the things that start to differentiate us from our, from our, uh, from our competition, uh, give us some extra points and drive, um, you know, the, the loyalty piece, but also uh, the referral business for us. Uh, so I would say technology, having the right partners and uh, and making sure that that centers around our, our customer. All right. And, and just uh, out of morbid curiosity here, Kelly, um, can you tell me about a marketing train wreck you've seen? And, uh, and maybe a cautionary tale on how that can be prevented? Yeah. Um, I, I won't go into like campaign specifics that I've, that I've seen, but uh, you know, I'll tell you that any business that isn't focused on their customer um, is, is going to be in trouble. Right. And I, and I think that a, a lot of ideas that when they start to see, you know, the first thing I learned when I was in, in school in my first marketing class, on, I'll never forget it is, uh, you know, the professor said, you know, the first thing you have to remember is that you're not the customer. So regardless of what it is that I felt uh, that is right, 
uh, it needs to be backed with, uh, you know, the right testing methodology, uh, the right sample size, um, and, and actually understanding, you know, what, what's your hypothesis and proving it out um, and, and making sure that that's all embodied around what the customer wants from us. Uh, and when, co when companies start to deviate from that and make decisions based on, you know, no, I know the business, so we're going to do X, Y, and Z, um, that gets very risky. Uh, because you break that rule that I learned on my first day of school um, and you end up creating things that aren't customer focused and with your best intentions, you know, you're not there opening the door every day. Um, so those decisions have real impacts. And then if people get, customers are pretty forgiving. I, I, I learned that too. Uh, but once you, you know, once they bring things to the table and you, they're not corrected or they have two or three bad experiences, that, that's it, they're gone, right? And, and your cost to, to try and recapture that customer is very expensive. So uh, a little bit long-winded there, but I would say if you are not focused on your customer and the experience that they're expecting from you, uh, the train wreck is, is imminent at, at that point. Well, there's a cautionary tale for anyone who's watching out there, Kelly, we really appreciate the benefit of your experience. I, it looks like someone has written in a question. Right. Um, can that relate to franchise sales? Uh, can what relate to franchise sales? Um, in as far as being uh, consumer oriented, in as far as paying attention to what the customer is saying, because franchisors can be can have their blinders on in the same manner and say, well, I've been in this business for, for years. Um, I know what the c consumer needs. Yeah. Uh, so for uh, someone looking to uh, at, at a, a pers prospective franchisee, does the same apply? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, whether it's franchise sales or you're selling to a consumer or online or whether you have a studio and you're selling wax services, you're going to have a customer, right? So in, in, that, in that franchise sales perspective, I would say the, the, the potential franchisee is your customer, right? Uh, and if you don't have the right offering and, and there's all different reasons why someone would open a franchise concept and uh, a part of it is, right, the profitability piece, the profitability plan, um, sales history, uh, franchise fees, build out costs, things like that, right? So if you're if you're not competitive in that space, um, that can put you at a disadvantage to 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 be able to um, you know reach your reach your goal, which is ultimately bringing in a, a new franchisee. So uh, yeah, I think you know the customers at the center of everything, and I would uh, venture off to say that that's pretty universal. If you're selling something, that's a universal truth. Okay. Now, we got another question here, and thank you for your questions. Keep them coming now that we got the man with us. Uh, and, uh, what if someone doesn't agree with what your marketing plans are? How do you handle it? Um, yeah, that's happened a lot uh, in my career. Uh, you know, when you're... When you're... You, mean you don't know everything? <laughs> no, I always say that, uh, you know, being in charge of, uh, in charge of marketing is like, uh, like being the quarterback, right? So... Uh, when you're, uh, when you're, when you, when you win the game, it was a team effort and everybody, everybody did a, a great job. And, and when you lose the game, it's typically your fault. So, uh, I, I saw that in, in a lot of different businesses I was in. Um, I think, you know, when I was at four eyes optical, it was, it was a little bit different because we owned all of our, our stores. We didn't have franchisees in that, in that instance there. So, uh, I think the setup is a little bit different, but you still have to be able to come up with your strategy. Uh, and communicate that to the company, communicate that to the stores, to the regional managers, um, so everybody knows what we're focused on and where we're going. Um, in franchising, uh, yeah, I think, you know, that happens. Uh, you know, what I try to stick to is uh, stick to the facts in terms of um, why it is that we're doing certain things. So I'm, I'm very um, thoughtful. Uh, you know, we don't do promotions and then, you know, say, great, we did a promotion. You know, we do the promotion and then we study it and we see if it worked. And if it didn't work, that's fine too that we know what not to do the next time around um so you know as you start to to build that history of, of what your promotional calendar is doing um you know you have that basis for your rationale and if people disagree along the way um that's okay you know okay well not not uh you know there's a reason why uh unike hired you and didn't go with you know anyone with a two-bit opinion right <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think so, I guess. <laughs> um, 
So does Unike have an ad fund? And can you tell me anything about that? Um, yeah, we have an ad fund. Um, so our ad fund is uh, is two percent, I believe, two two and a half percent. And then there's a local uh, marketing commitment as well um, that you have. Uh, that's that's another two percent. Um, so um, the national ad fund, um, you know, pays to to create the processes and the uh, kind of marketing calendar opportunities that we have uh, for for our studios. Um, and then the local marketing commitment piece is to give franchisees flexibility. If you open up in a new market, um, that you're, you're, you know, not all of your advertising contribution is going to a, a national ad fund, uh, but rather you can deploy some resources there locally, whether it be through, um, you know, digital marketing with Facebook and Instagram or participating in, in relevant local community type things that, that exist in, in different parts of the U.S. So people do have some leeway locally to to do, you know, local media. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, all right, and you and you as a marketing department support their local efforts as well. Okay. Yeah, so we, we have a whole um, intake process, right? So as a franchisee, there's a mechanism in place for you to be able to ask for certain things, and then our team here executes off of those things within certain timelines, and we, and we monitor um, kind of our, uh, our deliveries of those of those assets of, or, or of those items that, that are being asked of um, so that we stay consistent, right? So it's important that at the local level, if someone's asking for something and they need it by a certain date, um, that we're able to deliver that in that time frame, right? If, if not, they miss the marketing opportunity and the stuff we created was, was for nothing. So, um, you know, my team works on that uh, every day when, when things come through. Um, and some things are a little bit more complex than others. On the, on the digital side, we move very quickly though, you know, faster than I would say, I think any brand that I've been involved in, um, you know, we move light years faster than uh, some of those brands on the digital marketing side, right? So I think it's really powerful for a franchisee to know that, you know, if you uh, want to advertise on Facebook or Instagram, there is a way for you to do that and be online with your ads uh, within two to three business days. Um, so um, sometimes we even do it in one day, depending on, on how many, you know, how many things we have going on. But um, we've created a structure and a process to, to support that because, um, you know, the, a big part of digital advertising is, is the speed side, right? So um, that was something important for us to, to solve as soon as I joined. That is really interesting. And you may have just answered this a little bit, but another question that we just got was, as a new franchisee, what is the most important thing he, need, he or she or they, they need to know from a marketing perspective? Um, I think, uh, you know, I think it would, it, it would need to be, uh, right, like what does, the, what does the brand stand for and does that align with you, right? Does that align with your values? Uh, you know, from a business perspective, if you're not into a specific type of uh, business, then you probably shouldn't be in that business, right? I think that's gonna affect your longevity. Uh, as you grow specific markets and, and different things like that. So I think that's one, one important part. Um, the second part, I think, is really, um, you know, we have a lot of franchisees that come to our discovery days, right, uh, and, and learn about the brand and things like that. Um, you know, I think... ...that we've made, that we go through. Um, but, um, you know, I would say if you come already with some thought out questions, uh, into those meetings, I think it'll be a, a more productive, uh, kind of setting to, to discuss it, um, at that point. And then from there you can, you know, um, you know, kind of take the next steps that, that you want to take with us. But a lot of times I see people get to discovery day and just take and take the information and go, uh, where if you're watching this, this, this webinar, I'd say, you know, kind of think through what it is that you want from a brand, right. From a marketing perspective and bring that. Um, into the meeting uh, and let's talk about it together. That's so important, uh, uh, especially where uh, we work in franchise development and franchise sales to help make sure that people have the right expectation and that they're engaged in, in something that's an important investment that they're looking at being a business for years. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've got another question from another attendee. In retrospect, um, what's the what's the breakdown of how the overall marketing 
uh, expenditure is allocated on average uh, for me for local print media, social media, etc. Is there is there for is there something that you look at that in breaking that down, or can you talk about that? Um, yeah, I won't get into it. I don't think it's the uh, proper uh, venue, right? I think if uh, you know any franchisee that wants to know that when they come to Discovery Day, um, you know, we can talk about that we, offline. We talk, yeah, sure, we can talk about that uh, there, and um, you know, and we can go into it. Um, you know, I'll take a, a kind of a pivot from that que- from that question. I would say I do see a lot of our franchisees um, not going kind of the traditional print uh, kind of route anymore. So. Uh, the, I would say the majority of our franchisees advertise digitally through Google Ads and through Facebook uh, through that process I talked about earlier, um, and um, and we and we see some really good results through that. Uh, so I, I would say that's shifted a lot from from kind of some of the things you would see in the past, where you know they want to do a direct mailer and you have a three week lead time to get you know creative and all this stuff in, in order. Um, you know where now we break it down into you know promotional campaigns, awareness campaigns, local uh, events, and then you can advertise them. Um, and get some reporting on the back end with regards to what your money actually got you. So uh, we don't, that's something that we don't do, which I think is pretty cool too. Uh, you, you, we don't just set it and forget it. So uh, mm-hmm. when, a, when a franchisee does a digital marketing campaign um, through the process, an output of that uh, is every week uh, we're looking at the data and making um, you know, optimizations as we go. Um, but we actually give uh, those decks of information uh, to the franchisees that invest um, through digital media uh, with positives and negatives so, so they know the, the, the things that are working well and some of the opportunities that the campaign has, as well as with week over week metrics so that they can see uh, how that's performing. I, I understand. And, and that's a really important answer. I, I appreciate your elaborating on it. And I understand where, you know, you can't break down our company's yeah. strategy in a public forum, but for for the couple uh, who answer, who asked that question, you know, we'd sure like to be able to sit down and talk about how we do that more on a one-on-one basis here at our headquarters. Uh, do we have other questions? They're thinking about it. I know. Well, it looks like that is it for today. Uh, thank you for everyone for attending our webinar. We hope that you got some good nuggets out of it, and I hope that you'll be contacting me soon to talk more about your UNIK Wax Studio franchise. Kelly, thanks for sharing your knowledge, your experience, your insight. We're, we're better for having you here, and to everyone else, stay tuned for the next webinar. Have a great weekend. Great. Thank you. Take Take care. care.